Hello and welcome back to BS Rugby. Round one of the Six Nations is done and dusted. And one of my favourite series is that we did on the channel over the autumn was some tactical reviews where we would look at one of the games over the course of the weekend and really dissect and see what the winning team did so well and what the losing team needs to improve on ahead of next week. This week, we're focusing on Ireland against Wales. Ireland winning this one by 29 points to seven at the Aviva, the first game of the Six Nations, we're going to have a deep dive look at this. If you enjoy this video, as always, really appreciate it. If you could like the video, massively help. Subscribe as well. We're going to be doing loads of content during the course of the Six Nations. And welcome to all of those who have subscribed recently. Welcome to the community. And of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did Ireland do really, really well? And what do Wales certainly need to improve on? And do you agree with my assessment on the game? I am definitely not an expert. We're, we're going to crack on with it nonetheless. And straight away from the off, we saw very clearly that Ireland had the dominance in the front pack, didn't they? They really had the dominance in the pack and also at the breakdown. And one thing that they love to do is switch the direction of play. Gibson Park does it all the time from scrum half and Wales really struggled to adapt from it. Wales started with Dan Bigger. He put a lovely uh, kick up to kick off, quite competitive. Went to a scrum. Ireland went through a few phases. And this is what happened. Right? Wales getting frustrated that they couldn't compete at the breakdown, that they couldn't get out of the ball. So what happens is Dan Bigger fires out in number 10, fires out to try and take out Gibson Park. He misses his opportunity to do this. And this really was the pattern of the game. Wales always second best, always second to the breakdown and not able to compete in that area. And from this moment, we see the opportunity for Mark Hansen early on. Mac Hansen actually given man of the match in this game, but this was the early opportunity for him. If we take a look at this graphic, the ball comes out to Sexton. Uh, once again, Wales a little bit all over the place here. Sexton has an opportunity and an option to either kick. He can pass it out wide to his uh, man, I believe it's Hugo Keenan, or he could potentially fire it all the way to Mac Hansen. He decides to kick him behind with all of that space, which is understandable that he decides to do that. He's a little bit fortuitous with the kick, comes off a Welshman, bounces into the hands of Mac Hansen. But as you can see, because Dan Bigger is out of the defensive line and two Welsh players are stuck together from the previous breakdown, Louis Rees-Samit has got to focus on Hugo Keenan, but also Mac Hansen. And he picks Hugo Keenan and you can't blame him. He's got to pick one. If he doesn't pick any, he'll just, he'll, he'll just be in no man's land. So he decides to go for Hugo Keenan. It bounces kindly into the hands of Matt Canson. They go down the field. He can't quite convert the opportunity, but they do get the line out about seven, eight metres out. So from that moment, you can see one, Wales are way too narrow. Two, because of their frustration at the breakdown, they fired out from the breakdown and uh, had got out of position and made, and made loads of space out wide. And then Sexton, with the know-how and the experience and the understanding of the space in behind, he puts the kick in uh, through there. And we would see this pattern continue. Ireland really just one step ahead of Wales throughout the course of the game. From that line-out that we see, Ireland set up the driving mall. Usually, they, you tend to see them keep the ball in at the back of the driving mall. But Josh van der Flair pulls off the back and crashes through there. Unable to really uh, get too close to the try line, but he does beat the first man, which is the story of the game as well. And Ireland always, as I said, just one step ahead of this Welsh side. And finally, the dominance for Ireland would tell their first try coming through. Uh, Bundyaki who scored in the corner. Let's take a look at this graphic. Hopefully, I'll be able to explain it to you. Once again, Wales caught out way too narrow. Players looking at the wrong players. That lovely Sexton wraparound, which is just so famous these days. And once again, uh, caught Wales out throughout the course of the day. Uh, they had the advantage. Comes out from Gibson Park. Mac Hansen is at the back. Uh, he offers a lovely wraparound. And once again, all the Wales players are just drawn in. Uh, no idea where Liam Williams is at this point. I think he's next to the post. Nick Tompkins is having to cover as a winger, which is very concerning. He should never have to do that. Josh Adams is flying out the line. And Bundyaki is all on his own to crash in at the corner, unopposed and comfortably put Ireland ahead in this game. So once again, very basic stuff from Wales. Really well executed from Ireland. You've got to give them credit for that. And using that wraparound, either Hansen or Sexton, 
So Sexton usually would be the first receiver with Hansen on his shoulder, always to offer him a little bit different. So Sexton would always look to invite the defence on and then he'd play it into the hands of Hansen. And Ireland from them would really dominate. I mean, the fact that it was only 10 points to nil at half time was quite a surprise, if I must say so myself. But the big other area that Wales did struggle with, and we have alluded to it already, is at the breakdown. This was absolutely so infuriating to watch. Uh, Wales are going to obviously do the box kick here. That's the plan with Thomas Williams. But there are three Welsh players there. The man on the ball from Wales is on the ground. And yet, Rowlands. Win Jones and Thomas Francis are there setting up the caterpillar protection for Thomas Williams instead of focusing on the ball, focusing that we actually get the ball instead of just assuming that we've got it. We know that Ireland are going to come. They're going to be very competitive at the breakdown and they're really going to challenge us there. And it's one man, Andrew Porter, all on his own. There's not one other Irishman in that ruck. There's not a single Irishman barring Andrew Porter in that ruck. There are three Welshmen there. And yet Ireland come away with the ball and win a penalty from that. Now, they missed the penalty. The wind was causing havoc for Sexton in the first half, especially with his kicking. But that was just so basic from Wales. Just secure your ball first before you think about the next step. Make sure that you have the ball. Make sure you have the possession. Because as we see from the possession stats, when we look at the stats at the end, You'll see that Wales just could not get the ball in Ireland. We're trying to play a similar way to the way that they did against the All Blacks, where they just starved the opposition of the ball and defending for 65, 70 minutes, which Wales were, is very, very tiring. The next point we're going to move on to is something that I was talking a lot throughout the game and prior to the game once the team was announced, and that is, of course, Josh Adams. He was put in the centre, which I disagreed with originally. I thought that Owen Watkins should have been played in there with Nick Tompkins. But Josh Adams, I think we can all accept, is not a centre. He's not a centre, certainly at international level, especially against a team as good as this Irish side are. Uh, this is just a prime example of of it as uh, Sexton is going to do his wraparound as always and again Wales are way too narrow focus too much on the first receiver which again is is a little bit basic to be focused so much on the first receiver people should hold their positions along the defensive line instead of being sucked in all the time and that comes down to coaching in my opinion but again once again Josh Adams steps out I think he's expecting one of the front uh one of the forwards, sorry, to get the ball, but instead it's Sexton who gets it. He draws in um, Josh Adams, who has to try and commit. He misses the tackle. Nick Tompkins actually puts in an exceptional recovery tackle on Ringrose. Otherwise, Ringrose is in and scores there, although he does do that later. But Nick Tompkins has to cover all of that ground that Josh Adams should have been there. And again, if that Wales line had been in the straight line, backed our defence, that would never have been an issue. Again, the wraparound from Sexton, the dummy runners from this Irish team and taking the focus away from uh, from Sexton was really well executed by them and they did it constantly throughout the course of the afternoon. And at half-time, as I said, it was only 10 points to nil. I'm not too sure how, <laughs> considering Wales had hardly had the ball. But Wales were still in the game at this point. I said on the watch line, I said, look, it's only 10 points to nil down. If I was to play back, that's what I'd be saying at half-time. We've not been in the game, but we're only 10 points to nil down. We're still in this. We can potentially go and do something in this game. We just need a little bit of possession. We just need a little bit less naivety and complacency at the breakdown specifically. But Ireland would come out in the second half and would put the game to bed with the second try of the match. Coming through, of course, Andrew Conway. This time, the Irish with their big pack from the driving mall. Wales collapse it illegally. And there's an advantage for this Irish team straight away. Their heads are up. They're looking for the options. They're looking at who can get the ball. They're looking at is their space out wide. And the ball just goes through the hands. First of all, the ball comes to Bundyaki, who's the first receiver. Gary Ringrose acts as the dummy runner. All the focus of the Wales players is on Aki. And ring rose to an extent. But once again, as I alluded to earlier on, it's that wraparound from Sexton. Just coming in behind there and offering that brilliant option. He does that. He's got Mac Hansen on his right as well. And the ball eventually comes all the way out to Andrew Conway, who finishes brilliantly in the corner to give Ireland a 17-point lead, I want to say it was. I think it was 17 points to nil at that point. And again, just very basic rugby from Wales. But the speed 
that this Irish team could do it at is what Wales struggled with. The fact that they know this is an advantage. Gibson Park, ball straight out into the hands of Aki. Aki comes across. It's clear training, ground move. Ringrose comes across, behind into Sexton. Sexton fires it out to Conway, who's in acres of space. And he finishes in the corner. And he finishes it really well, actually. The TMO do have a look at it. But there's no question mark about whether it's a try or not. And the next big moment in the game is the game where Josh Adams' day just went from bad to worse. Getting a yellow card, of course, um, and seeing 10 minutes in the bin. And he can have no complaints about it. Now, the most frustrating thing about the yellow is this situation here. Is that Wales, as you can see from Jakob Piper's arm, have the advantage. We have the advantage. So whatever happens from here onwards, we're going to get a penalty from it. So we can either go to the corner or we can take the post. You probably would have gone for the post just to get something on the board. Thomas Williams is about to send a little chip kick through. Josh Adams, as you can see in the top right, you can just about make out his face, is about to run through and uh, try and get on the end of this. He doesn't manage to do it. And in his frustration, he takes out Johnny Sexton. Johnny Sexton, not particularly close to the ball, probably three or four metres away. And he shoulders him into the chest. And it's a stupid thing to do. It's an absolutely stupid thing to do. Jakob Piper has no choice but to send him to the bin. And there were people saying in my chat about, oh, it should be a red. It was teetering on the edge. But for me, it was a yellow, no contact with the head. He was maybe wrapping his arm ever so slightly. So that probably played into his favour, but still a very stupid thing to do and uh, put himself in a lot of bother there and, and just frustration because he's obviously playing in the centre. He knows he's not comfortable there. He knows he's not getting the ball as much as he wants and in space as well. He knows that he's always been targeted defensively and he just must be so frustrated at this point that whatever we were trying to do was clearly not working and it seemed like we didn't have the ability to change that and that's down to Ireland as well. Because their game plan was exquisite, but there was still a lot of things that Wales could have done a lot better. And from there, Ireland would just capitalise on it and want to score in one of the tries of the weekend. Um, lovely hands here from James Ryan into Josh van der Fleer. I've uh, zoomed in a little bit on this screen for you. He spots the mismatch between, I want to say it's Wynne Jones and Thomas Francis. Two Wales players stuck together. Josh van der Fleer bursts through the gap. Liam Williams has actually turned his back on the, the play in this one, and they burst through the gap. They go through a few phases. James Ryan makes some really good metres. And in the end, it is very, uh, very simple. And Ireland crash over once again in this match. And it's just really, really simple rugby from Ireland. And it's just very simple. Draw the man in, release players, get your big ball carries, pick and go hard, get quick ball and fire it out and Andrew Conway scores in the corner for the easiest try he'll score in a very very long time wales crowd to now but again uh just such quick ball that break from josh van der Fleer is what creates that opportunity defense a little bit all over the place so you can't really criticize wales all that much on that one it's a difficult one to do that you just got to credit ireland the distribution the effectiveness that they did that move was fantastic the speed of ball we see it with the provinces week in week out just that speed of ball, the fact that at the breakdown, the ball's there for Luke McGrath or a uh, Craig Casey or for a John Cooney, whoever it is at the provinces. But today it was, of course, for Gibson Park. So it was always there for them. The ball was always there. Wales struggled at the breakdown. And as we have to look at the stats at the end, that will certainly back that up. Ireland would go on, though, to get their third try of the, uh, sorry, their fourth try of the game through Gary Ringrose. We'll run through it quickly here. Once again, Wales are faffing about with it faffing about with it just outside of own 22. You go through a few phases and in my head, I might just pass it back to Bigger, let him kick it away or pass it to Tom, or Thomas Williams, take the responsibility and box kick it. We tried to go through one too many phases and in the end, Andrew Porter, who got a three or four really nice steals at the breakdown, rips it out of the hands of Will Rowlands and the counter-attack is on. Wales' defence is not set at all. And this is where Ireland are really, really dangerous. This is the situation we have. And when I was watching it, I was screaming, screaming at the TV because I knew we were fucked, basically. So what happens here? Wales, as you can see, all our players circled in red there. Majority of them are just nowhere to be seen. Ball comes out here to Mac Hansen. You do not want the ball coming to. You just don't want him in that kind of open field. He feeds it to Aki, who runs hard and straight, drawing in the defender, plays it in 
to Gary Ringrose, who just runs in from this position. And it's a brilliant finish from him. But once again, Wales' defence just not set at all. Johnny McNichols trying to run across to cover. And oh, it's just an absolute mess. It's an absolute mess. But once again, credit to Ireland for the fact that they just so clinical. They just sense the opportunity and off they go. There's no questions about it. Gibson Park gets the ball, fires it out. Sexton has Hansen on his right hand side. Hansen looks up, runs straight. Aki runs straight and hard, releases the pass at the right time. And Gary Ringo is one of the best centers in the world, backs himself, leaves players on the ground and crashes over to score their fourth try. Now, Wales, of course, would get a try from Tame Basham. Not all that much to report on that, to be honest. It's a fortuitous try. You know, it comes off an interception. Good awareness from him. He was probably the shining light for Wales. And what other was a really, really difficult afternoon. Uh, let's have a look at some of the stats from the game. And then I'll quickly summarise what my thoughts were. Again, as I said, Ireland were just so dominant in every facet of the game. 60% to 40% possession. 57 to 43% possession. And then time in possession. Uh, four, tw 22 minutes, sorry, to the 14 of Wales, just super dominant. This what they did against the All Blacks. They just starved them of possession, just hold on to the ball, tire them out physically, and know that the game is going to open up the way that they want. But again, at the breakdown, this is the area that Wales really did struggle. Rooks won 122, the Irish. Wales only 76. Knock-ons was a big issue for Wales, but that's because they're trying to offload more, as you can see from the offloading stats and handling areas are up. And once again, trying to offload Maybe a little bit too much. Maybe need to do it more simple. But again, Rooks lost only two to Ireland and Wales four. Breakdown steals five to Ireland, only one for Wales. So you can see where this Irish team, again, the dominance. They were winning the battle at the breakdown. So again, the platform to play with the likes of Josh Adams in the centre who couldn't defend that channel so well. And um, just with a brilliant player such as Aki, I thought Ring Rose was exceptional throughout the game. Thought Sex and controlled things really well from 10. Hansen offered a threat throughout the game. Hugo Keenan was fairly quiet, but that didn't matter really all that much. But on the whole, for Wales, a lot to work on ahead of Scotland. We've got to get the basics right. There's going to be a lot of questions asked of Wayne Pivak, and rightly so, in my opinion. The game plan was wrong, putting Josh Adams in the centre did not work and I think most people were saying that it wouldn't work and we were proven right. I mean, if you're going to do that against Italy, to an extent it could work, but Josh Adams has done that at URC level and he's done it to an extent at European level, but this is international rugby. It's another level up from that and to think that you could get away with that, it, it's not arrogant, but maybe it's a little bit stupid if we're being totally honest in that sense. For Ireland, I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't think they had to come out of second gear. I thought they were brilliant throughout the game. But winning those collisions, winning the breakdown battle and the sexing on that bloody wraparound, I'm telling you. Uh, it, it was so simple from them, but just so effective. But what concerns me as a Welshman is that we all knew these things before the game. We knew that Ireland were going to compete at the breakdown. We knew that Sexton was going to wrap around a lot. We knew that they're going to try and play a running game. And we knew that they were, were going to have their big ball carriers coming in and looking for those little gaps that they can burst through. And it seemed like we didn't know that that was going to happen, which is very concerning. Looking from a coaching perspective, that me, as a casual, not, not a casual fan, I do watch a lot of rugby, but someone who's never played at a very high level, someone who certainly doesn't coach at a high level, it could spot that. Most rugby fans could spot that. It is very, very concerning. And maybe a little bit of naivety from Wales going into this game. But if I'm being totally honest, this performance has been coming for a really long time. We weren't convincing in the autumn at all. Last year's Six Nations, yes, we won it. I'm not too sure how. Um, but the performances weren't great in a lot of the games. And uh, this performance has been coming. And people are talking about tradition. I'm not going to get too much into why I think about Wayne Pivak as a head coach of Wales. But it's a difficult situation to be in. And that Scotland game, I mean, you'd have to say Scotland are favourites. And I can't see us winning another game. And Italy today putting a decent performance against France. But we have them at home. So that's going to be a big game for us. It's going to be a challenging Six Nations. But Ireland were fantastic. They go to Paris next. And uh, that could be a Six Nations decider. You could certainly see that happening in Paris. Well, Wales welcome Scotland, of course. But there you go. That's my tactical review of the game. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. I hope not. But I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, as I said at the start, 
please do hit the like button it massively helps the channel subscribe as well keep up to date with everything going on uh to do with the six nations we've got loads of videos coming out over the next few weeks and of course let me know your thoughts in the comments down below where did it go right for ireland how they look to approach the france game and of course what went wrong for wales and what do they need to change ahead of scotland thank you very much for watching folks hope you enjoyed this opening weekend of the six nations i'll see you very soon here on beer